I should, oh, they were in the lab. I'll bring uh, them next time. In the bag, right? Yeah. See, I was just able to grab the <laughs> makeshift tripod and a marker. And a ruler? The ruler's for the tripod. Because Boxer Races has a lecture right now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, God. I couldn't beat them to the lab that class. All right, cool. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm going to keep this lecture short because I know midterms are existing, so I um, want to be mindful of that. And then also I'm going to give more details in the module spec. So, yeah. But this is the synchronization series, segment number two. Um, before I get into it, some announcements. Uh, module one, give me a few days. I want to like touch some things up to make it clearer. Um, so I'll release it Friday night. Um, like Sayer mentioned, we have a joint work session, so uh, wrap hardware and software this Sunday, noon to three. Um, and the software module one, I'm hoping to have it due uh, a week from this Sunday so that that the week from so that a week from this Sunday we can have our intro to the MCU workshop and move from all this simulating on MATLAB to actually implementing on the MCUs. Um, in past years, there's actually been another software assignment that um, where we make you do all of the translating MATLAB into C code and putting it on the MCU, but that is honestly kind of a painful process that in my experience you don't learn that much from so y'all are lucky I'm just gonna like give you probably most of the code and just talk you through it um, and just give you some basics on the MCU so that spring quarter or I just after this workshop we can all um, jump into R&D together. Um, brings me to my next point we're planning on having two software R&D meetings this quarter. First one is gonna be um, I haven't decided yet. Might be some like Q and A, like slash reviewing all of the software concepts we've done through these. The I guess it'll be three software assignments. Um, but the the thing that I want to focus on is um, figuring out of the different software R and D um, I guess ideas that I have, what people are interested in, and um, starting to assign different tasks to folks depending on what they're interested in. Um, yeah, and then the following week as well, same kind of deal. Um, no Sunday work sessions, it's towards the end of the quarter. We'll just start those spring quarter. Um, and if you haven't done module four, please do it. Yeah. Cool. Questions on logistics? We're good? Okay. So, starting to get back into content. Um, so the last module, module four, um, was all about the Casas loop, um, which the whole gist of it is that when we do carrier demodulation, we need to be mindful of the time delay between the transmitter and the receiver. Um, hopefully, you all have done module four and understand that. Um, and also in the last lecture, we talked about three big issues with our receiver. Um, so we, oh, I, I can write stuff, I forgot about that. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, so we fixed this first one through the Casas loop. And I mentioned uh, during the last lecture, oh, we'll fix the, the next ones in the next lecture. And now it's the next lecture, very exciting. So um, we're going to, I'm gonna review what these issues are, but this is kind of the overview of today. Um, because, so last lecture and last module, um, we focused on the carrier demodulation issue using Casas loop. And today we're going to look more carefully at how we convert symbols to bits. Oh wait, you can't see that. Ah, my bad. And, uh, yeah, so this is going to be something called, something that I call symbol synchronization. But that often in the literature you'll see referred to as timing recovery or clock recovery. And then finally, um, the what we'll learn how we actually, um, I guess, practically 
uh, need to implement the bits to information uh, process. And that's through something called, um, that, or that process is called frame synchronization. Um, oh, what's up? Um, yeah, yeah, why don't you grab a chair over there? So, today's lecture, our two main topics, symbol sync. I realized I, I just wrote that, I was getting ahead of myself earlier, but for completion's sake, I'm gonna write it again. Symbol sync. I also recall called clock recovery and timing recovery. Ugh. Um, and the big idea with symbol synchronization is how do we know which uh, which samples in are demodulated sim modulated signal actually correspond to symbols. Um, and then second topic is gonna be frame sync uh, and the way that we do that is something called packet detection, as in a data packet. Um, and the big idea behind frame synchronization is how do we know which bits are grouped together. So just gonna get right into it. Um, starting with symbol synchronization, um, before I get into the intuition behind the algorithm that we'll use to do this, um, I'm gonna do some review on the relationship between frequency and phase. So suppose you have two oscillators that are oscillating at the same frequency f, but oscillator one has a certain phase, theta one, and oscillator two has a phase, uh, did I say theta one? Os yeah, okay, y'all be yeah. Oscillator 2 has phase theta 2. Um, so, <laughs> given that they're oscillating at the same frequency, will their phase difference change with time? No. Number two, if two oscillators of the frequencies that you don't know definitely have the same phase difference over time, what is their frequency difference? Zero. Um, and then this third question is just kind of a spin off of the first two, but um, it'll, it's more directly applicable to our algorithm for symbol synchronization. So can you ever have two oscillators with the same phase over time, but different frequencies? No. Cool, yeah. And all this goes back to the relationship between frequency and phase, d theta dt equals f, and f equals integral of theta dt. Cool, yeah. And symbol synchronization, like, and you'll remember this is, uh, like this concept of the relationship between frequency and phase was something that we drew upon heavily for um, carrier synchronization and the costless loop. Um, and it's something that we'll also draw upon heavily for simple synchronization. So getting a bit more into the need for symbol synchronization is that so far we've been um, <laughs> assuming that the transmitter MCU clock has the exact same uh, rate and like is exactly synced with the receiver's MCU clock. But the thing is, no oscillator is ever perfect. So there might be, so if the transmitter MCU clock is um, sampling at one megahertz, maybe the receiver MCU clock is one megahertz plus or minus 10 hertz or 100 hertz. And the thing is, is when you're dealing with frequencies as high as... <laughs> Guys! 